there's been a lot of uh, conversation online about the air conditioning in the 3X20s, 3Rs, 4Rs, all the cab tractors in the John Deere 3 and 4 Series line. We're going to address these issues with six proposals of how you can improve your AC's performance. All these are low cost. And then we're going to also show you or maybe kind of mention even more changes can be done. The last thing we're going to do is show you a few differences between a 2024 model 3R and a 2011 model 3520. There have been a few changes. Let's get started. First, I want to mention a couple of items that you can do that we're not going to do today. Not say we'll never do them, but we're not going to do in today's episode. The first is to tint your windows. I've got my neighbor Chris coming over in a, in a little while. He's going to help me with, with some of the projects we are going to show you. We're going to change here on the 3520, but we've decided not to tint the windows in this episode. Now, Chris says he's found some, some window tint that'll reduce the UV, but it's not so dark on your windows. And, and so we may try that at some point. I just want to mention that up front. It's, it's like a, a greenhouse in there, right? So it's probably something that's low hanging fruit that you can help yourself a lot by tinting your windows. My resistance is that it's harder to see out. It's harder for you, our viewers, to see in and, and see if I'm pointing somewhere or, or talking to you through the cab window. So for now, we're not going to change that. The second area is an area that's kind of primitive in this particular tractor, and that's the recirculate versus fresh air selection. There is no way to actually select that manually. This is where the recirculation takes place, okay? And the fresh air comes in through the filter in the back, which is right behind this. There's no way to, to toggle that between use recirculate air and use fresh air. And I think that would really help us. Uh, a lot of comments online have said that they've blocked off the fresh air intake. Uh, some of them have actually opened this up so that the recirculate has uh, bigger holes here. Um, I'm just not prepared to do that yet. I'm not certain that I want to. But on the other hand, I get the point. If you've got some reasonably cool air, uh, using that, reusing that, if it's already got the humidity taken out of it, it's reasonably cool. Uh, I, I think there's something that could be gained there. And Chris and I may make some effort to see if we can come up with some sort of a way to make that switchable. If you've got any ideas, let us know in the comments section. Low hanging fruit there as far as gains, but I think it might be difficult to implement. So we're not going to touch that today. The cabin air filter is here on the back side of the tractor. Of course, you need to make sure you keep that clean. That's something to clean frequently. You can use an air compressor. Don't use a real high pressure. And typically, I would recommend that you blow back out the direction that the air was trying to come in. So don't force the dust through towards the inside, for example. Blow this way to force it back outside so that you're not damaging the filter. And again, don't use a very high pressure. This Radiator Genie is really good at, it's, it's got a slit on the side of it here, and it's really good at blowing that out. Of course, and you'll take the filter out and um, use it to blow through the filter. Uh, you'll, we'll also use it up front here in just a minute. While you've got this filter off, you get a little bit of a view of the evaporator up here. Unfortunately, not enough view. One of the items on our list, actually the next item on our list, is making sure that this evaporator is clean. Even with decent filter maintenance here, this will become plugged. When I got my 3520, it was absolutely solid plugged all along the back side, even on the top. And I had to just, just blow it with uh, air, just work at it a long time to get it unplugged. Of course, that tractor had 3,600 hours on it, and I suspect it had never been really cleaned out other than maybe just what was visible here. To do that, I'd recommend taking the roof off. It isn't that hard. There are 13 bolts. Here's two of them right here. Two of them are under the lights on the back, and the rest of them are exposed, and they're just 13 millimeter bolts. It gives you amazing access. You do that for the radio, 
replacement that we've talked about, many other purposes, that is an important item to, to do. And getting this evaporator clean, very important. We're in the front of the tractor now. We have a just a stack of coolers here, right? I'm gonna take this little screen off. This is the 3520, so this is a, the older machine. Uh, the front one is the air conditioner condenser. The middle one is the hydraulic oil cooler and the back one is the radiator. As we see in a minute on the larger tractor, the 3720 or the 3046R, there's an additional cooler in front of this. We'll talk about that in a moment. This is the second area you need to clean. And unfortunately, Deer hasn't made it easy for us to get into this stack of coolers. I've got the radiator genie here and I can go in from the side here and I can get to the oil cooler, but I, I don't have any way to get in between the oil cooler and the air conditioner condenser. And nor do I have, if I try to blow backwards into the radiator, I can't do that either. So even with this custom tool, it's, it's not easy to get to. So the, the one series, for example, has a removable screen in between uh, the oil cooler and the radiator. No such thing here on these larger machines. I, I really wish they had uh, some better approaches here so that it was easier to maintain this. Keeping, keeping this stack of coolers clean is very, very difficult. Let's take a look at the 3046R. So as I mentioned here on the 3046R, we've got an additional cooler. Uh, this would be on the 3720 as well. This is an intercooler. This provides a little more horsepower. So you typically have either a naturally aspirated engine and then you have a turbocharger. And then the next step up is an intercooler. And that's what we have on this particular one. Behind it again, we have the air conditioner condenser and we have the oil cooler and we have the radiator. Now, one interesting point here is this air conditioner condenser is larger than the one on the 3520. This one is 18 inches wide. Both of them are 18 inches wide. This one is 19 inches tall. The 3520 is about 15 inches tall. And this one appears to be a little bit thicker, appears to be about an inch thick, whereas the other one is about three quarters of an inch thick. So this is overall a, a bigger condenser. So maybe that's something they have improved in these tractors since the old uh, 3X20s. On the other end, the evaporator side we showed you behind the cab, it is identical. In fact, when we took the roof off of this 3046R, it is in all ways identical to this 13 year earlier model, the 3520. We saw no differences at all. Uh, the only difference, actually we did see one difference and that was the connector for the radio. The radio upgrade is going to need a different adapter to be able to replace the 2024 model radio with one of your choice. Other than that, everything under the roof looks identical from 13 years ago. Chris, when we took the lid off of this thing, the first thing that we noticed was that the cold air, which comes out here, and the same thing on your side, just blows into this whole cavity, basically this size right here. And we thought we could improve this by making some duct work. We did. So we came up with several prototypes. This was one of mine that went on the duct here. And, you know, kind of, you know, we had all kinds of prototypes that we had put together. Uh, we had taken off these relays and just kind of set them here in the side. Uh, this is the, the factory way of these relays. And show, show another approach we used. Yeah. I've actually made a form. And yeah. then we actually took pipes, cut them to go actually exactly over the holes. Yeah. And then we cast it in place. And that's um, great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, and it, it expanded. We, we tried to get the low expanding, but even that yeah. expanded more. It, it needs oxygen for it to fully cure. And that's what we found was it was a little bit challenging. And then we had one that would, we thought about connecting directly onto the back. And then this would go to the front too, and there'd be one more extension hole for the third outlet. Yeah. And what we got into was that it was definitely not a do-it-yourself type of endeavor. There, yeah. It just not. We could have figured out something that we could have cobbled in here and made this work. But what we were trying to do was come up with something that was marketable. Something that maybe we could make a form out of 
and then maybe get some styrofoam pieces made or something made that we could... We could just drop it, basically take the top off, drop them in place, put them back on, get some new efficiencies and go on your way. Yeah, so that we could make it available to you guys uh, to, to improve your, your cabs. At this point, I think we've just decided to abandon ship on the duct work. And I, I think the number one reason is the complexity of trying to make something like that. The number two reason is we're getting a lot of airflow. Yeah, it was, it's, it's amazing. It is a closed chamber, and as long as your seals are in place and you are making this a sealed compartment, it is blowing. And then we also had another question. How much do the relays and things depend on that cool air to maintain an operating temperature where they won't fail? Is it possible that if we took these relays and put them down here somewhere and stuffed insulation all around them, that we'd make them overheat? I mean, it's, it's entirely possible. There, there may be other engineering matters that you know, we're just not considering because, well, we're focused on one thing and that's improving the AC. So yeah, we've abandoned that. We'll get these out of here and we'll get to the next item. Based on feedback we heard from, from other people that have got in here and began to experiment on this, Chris, they, they said the, the, what they thought helped the most was to separate this cold air area from this area up here that's essentially hot air area, right? Or even this area is the area that's already been blown to. So to try to get a separation between this hot air and the cold air, and I think they said most of all was this right here because since the fans are sucking air essentially through the outside, the airflow comes through the outside, through this evaporator, in here, if the fans were able to pull any hot air in here, yep. it's incredibly inefficient. Well, and once you block this off and you use recirculating air, it's gonna probably produce a little more suction on this yeah, side. So, so any, any gaps we have, like that little gap, or if the, if the gasket's not perfect, that's, that's what we have to fix. So we've got, I've got a new gasket for this one. This one's quite old. And I've got a new gasket for up here. We're going to work on that now and see if we can get these new gaskets on and get this sealed off. I think this is an area that at least other folks have said has been the number one thing yep. that they've been able to improve. I think I can just start pulling this right off around the edge here. I'm rolling it with my thumb and it's just kind of all coming right off. I just counted on this guy being the same length. Let's hope it turns out to be that. Yeah. It looks like it's going to be pretty close. It goes right to the mark. Yeah, this was gone. This section was gone on this side. Now the new 3046R has the radio antenna on the other side, and I think that's so that they can use a shorter cable. This cable is stretched kind of beyond its capability because we didn't buy a deer antenna this time after my last breakage. I broke it putting it on. You can go watch that video if you'd like. Now we really don't know what we're doing here. This is deer purchased foam. We think we're supposed to put it on the roof of the cab instead of here, but we also think this is a critical space. We think it doesn't have to be stuck very well. I believe it'll compress and Because if we can just get the roof sitting on there, this is that separation point that, that we were concerned about and the other viewers said was the most important. We're gonna run this right around here and match match up with this. We got plenty of this oh, so might as well make use weather strip to make it happen. Is there anything else we might wanna seal up in here? I don't think so. I mean, you're pretty well all, around, all the way around here. I think we are ready to put the top back. So we've got some photos here of showing this in progress. What? we've done is in each one of these little slots, yep. you've cut. And put two layers in. There were basically ribs crossways here that you had to stay in between, right? And you can still fill them. Here's your hard points. Okay. They're still exposed, you can feel them. Now this stuff, uh, we'll put a link to it at our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim. Each layer is supposed to be R8. And it's supposed to be 97% reflective. But R8, and it's only a quarter of an inch thick, that it seems almost too good impossible. to be true. Yeah, yeah it does, doesn't true. it? But let's say it's R4. Yep. Even that seems pretty good. Then you double thickness on that, yep. and then you put all this HVAC true duct tape. Now, you've even put a layer over... Over the factory. 
the and factory to, foam. And to do that, I had to take the factory bolts. bolts bolts out and then cut little things and try to figure out how to get them back in place. You've put one layer over the factory or you put two over that? I put one over the factory. Okay. Just in case there was any kind of a space claim or that we were going to be tied in any place. So I didn't want to get into things, so I was trying to minimize that. Chris, being the engineer, he thinks there's going to be a lot of radiant heat. And, and he, I'm just too pragmatic because as far as I'm concerned, all the radiant heat was already absorbed into the roof and is now just being transmitted as whatever. Conductive. Conductive heat. But that's what this but is But you're for. saying this is going to, Help. somehow even inside, it's going to turn that back around. Well, it's gonna, I'm it's telling gonna, you, that's just a little too theoretical it's, for me. It's just like the ceiling in your building. The more insulation is between it, the longer it takes for that to penetrate, the more thermals get rejected versus coming into your cab. Yeah, okay, so I get that. Yep. I don't wanna argue about this anymore. The point is, is we think insulating this is gonna help. So not only should it be initially quicker to get the cold air flowing, right. it should also not have uh, as much continual heat coming down through uh, through the roof. So that's what this center is hopefully gonna help us with so that the cold air stays cold. And then we're ready to go on. What do you think? I think it's awesome. This is a question to ask you guys, the viewers. It, we could actually measure these and pre-cut these and number these and everything for you. You'd have to pay extra to have us do that but the question is is that a value to you or would you rather just take this as a DIY project yourself because I think it would add a lot to the expense for us to have them pre-cut but it would make it easier for somebody. Would, yeah. You get a package it'd come with the tape it'd come with instructions to tell you you have to take out the little thing. So either Chris and I could do this make a product out of it or one of you viewers could make a product out of it. Yep right and start your own business and promote it right here on tractor time with tim it's not like we're trying to make the money we're trying to make it better yes right i mean that's that's really what we've done here the whole time on this channel and uh yeah let's get it on there ready up we go and i'm gonna watch as we go down hey look at that it's there going on go. these two right here one on each side you have to take the signal lights down to be able to get to these two. So that's right up in here. And there's two more right here and you have to take the filter off, the filter cover off for that. So you really can't get to any of the four in the rear without taking something off. The other nine are accessible, easily accessible, 13 millimeter socket. This is really an easy job and something that I would recommend that you do as a part of maintenance to, to clean out that evaporator. Cause I think it's gonna get, it's gonna get dirty now. I, I'm not saying every 50 hours, I mean every 400 hours, or if like me, you buy an old used tractor like this, take a peek in there and see how bad that evaporator is. But it is a two person job. I took it off the first time by myself and that was, well, it was a mistake, I'll just be honest. But with one person on each side, we can easily lift that off, right? Or put it back on. Christy and I have done it, Chris and I have done it. It's not that difficult with two people. Now, without the additional insulation that we've added, you don't have to pull down on this at all to start these. It's, it sits right down. With all the insulation that Chris has added, uh, we, we're having to pull this down, put a good bit of pressure on it to be able to get to those studs. Well, you can see it come down, but there's no deflection. It's not like you're bowing it. It has a very firm feel to it when I get it down. When it's, when it's set. When it's set, yeah. Well, those, you can they, even hear the difference. They actually want to seat and be flat. I like it already. It's nice. Chris, one of our viewers, his name is Slade, or at least his user ID on tractoruniverse.com is Slade. He has provided a list of 20 modifications, 20, not six like we just went through, try to make his the air conditioning, air conditioning better on his 3720. Okay. Which would be the same exact system. Yes, and by the way, the four R's and four 40 X20s, so 41, 3, 5, and 720, they all have the same cab, same AC system. The, anything we've done here should be relevant to that. 20 mods, I think he could actually put you to a test. I okay. think this guy might out Chris Chris. Okay. So let's go through his items. I think we've covered some of them. He's done uh, plumb the return air to recirculate only. 
So he's played it off the back and he's gonna use interior air only. And number two, he removed return air filter bracket middles to give maximum return air flow. So those little so he, slots in the middles that we showed you there in the cab, he's removed those. So he has a, so he has a higher airflow. Yeah, in okay. the return. Pull the cab lid off and insulate the bottom of the lid and the bottom of roof pan. We did the bottom of the lid. We have not done the bottom of the roof pan, yeah, which would be the interior in the cab, right? But we did put two coats throughout that area. Yep. And yep. Th that way, when we pull it off, it comes with us. Number four, re check and replace all internal cab slash roof pan gaskets to ensure no cold air loss and no hot air intrusion. We did that. Yep. Number five, replace cab lid gasket when reinstalling and caulk areas that seal was questionable. I would not caulk just for the fact you want to take it back off, but. Yeah, we didn't caulk. Um, you right. know, some of those other holes, I suppose we could have put something in. We talked about that and you, you kind of thought it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter much. Nope. So if we have any trouble, it's going to be all your fault. It will be again. Okay. Number six, clean evaporator coil on top of cab thoroughly. Yes. Uh, seven, clean radiator air conditioner condenser or cooler thoroughly. Yes, yes, we showed you that. Number eight, install screen mesh on grill to ensure radiator stays clean. So he's put an extra, it almost looks like a, a, a window a screen. screen. Real on, fine. Outside of the, of the screen here just to try to. And I would give you just one minor warning on that is run the risk of overheating because you can't yeah, pull enough you, air through it. But so you've as got long to, as he cleans it. Got to clean you, that, yeah. 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 This was an interesting one. He insulated the low pressure Freon line from the compressor to where the line enters the bottom of the cab. Which would be typical to what you would do for a home unit. Yeah. That's a good idea, so we, we could do that. Now, and this next one is, is interesting as well. He's installed a heat shield between the cab and the engine. Okay, so several of the items we're gonna get to are trying to protect from heat from the engine Making it into Making the cab. Making it into the cab, yeah. yeah that's logical. Uh, number 11, wrap the exhaust pipe after the turbo, which is right next to the cab. Just like um, you're, you're trying to keep heat away. So he's doing the right thing. Install a vertical exhaust, okay? So these guys have an optional vertical exhaust. It's a little hole here and you can buy the vertical exhaust kit. There's some discussion on that on greentractortalk.com. I've never really thought about it to protect you know, for, for air, conditioning air conditioning reasons. But I think the thought is the, the exhaust might come out close enough here that some of that hot air gets back into the intake. Now this one's over my head. Adjust the Freon level to where compressor runs all the time at 2000 RPM on the hottest days, but is on the verge of kicking out due to low pressure. Now the units are made to have a very, what they call uh, subcool, and you wanna hit that subcool. What it says is that at the expansion point, if this, these may be pin coils or they may be expansion coil. If it's an expansion coil, you want it to be exactly tuned. And that's the efficiency. So on a house unit, you have to hit that exact subcool. Okay. So you think maybe, maybe that wasn't necessary. I would not there. do that. Number 14, install insulating foam board around the sides of radiator and air conditioner condenser, forcing all air to flow through the air conditioner condenser. We saw that the, uh, especially on the older model like he has, there's some areas where the, the okay. air could go around the air conditioner condenser and still get through the radiator. So the fan could suck it around. He's trying to yeah, force so he's it trying all through. He's directing it. He's trying to maximize the air through that condenser and maybe the larger condenser well, on the 3R would make that a little bit better. And what do you do on a car when you have those? You put a separate electric fan in there that also okay. would cut in. That's Number 15, <laughs> install electric cooling fan on the front charged air radiator. Yep. Okay. Number 16, install a shim on the rear bottom of the battery, right in front of the tractor, tilting it forward a bit for better airflow. I mean, this guy's catching. Yeah, everything. he's looking for anything and everything. Number 17, install electric cooling fan between exhaust manifold and the cab to get rid of that heat. Again, right back here. He's installed another fan. Uh, now, number 18, install a shutoff valve on the heater water line going up to the cab. I've heard of a lot of people doing this type sure. of thing on any tractor to try to, yeah, you Minimize can turn them. that off, but maybe maybe a, a, a true shutoff valve. Remove the interior lower panels and insulated behind them. We've been in there, but we didn't put any insulation in. When I maybe I should have done that. Um, number twenty: tint the windows on the sides and rear of cab. And I agree with that one because you can knock down a lot of radiant heat. 
What, what's interesting is they make really, really good products now. One of the problems though with window tints, if you've seen them on a car, you'll see them with small marks, but they make an over cover for them now that are very, very durable. And these are work, these are utility. Yeah. And so you get in and you have your, your super clamps or something in your pocket, if it touches it, you don't want it to mark it. So I'd advise, I would advise to put the coating on it too. Yeah, I had a viewer also mention on that, that, that if you have the tinting on the inside, uh, he busted his window, rear window out with his mower, and if, he felt like if he'd had that coating on there, he wouldn't have had a gazillion pieces of glass in his cab to it clean up. It will suspend. Yeah, it'll suspend that. I hope this has given you some ideas. We've, we've done some work. We may follow up with some, some actual testing. We thought about parking both of these tractors out in the heat for a specific period of time, shooting a thermal heat, tester right up against the roof to see if it's improved any in there. If you've got any more ideas, leave them in the comments. Hope you found this kind of interesting. Um, anytime we have Chris on, we, we, get, we get challenged from an uh, even more crazy engineering standpoint. Hey, but it's all good. <laughs> like I say, it's, this, has been, this has been a good project on the roof for many reasons. And to be honest, the whole idea of putting in the ductwork, we learned a lot. We learned it's an easy idea, but it's kind of hard to execute. I think you could do it on your own. Uh, but I don't think it's very easy to make sellable. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. And Chris. And Chris. Engineer Chris. There you go. Neighbor Chris. It used to be neighbor Chris. I think it's going to be engineer Chris. Well, I can still get www.neighbor.chris. So. Neighborchris.com? Yeah. <laughs> Just send me you your question. You could probably get Engineer Chris, too. Probably. <laughs>